a few general tips on meditation 101. Meditation, simply put, is learning to focus the mind. That's really, that's really what it is, if we could encapsulate meditation. Now, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of methods to do that. And meditation comes in three aims, if you will, three aims. Learning to optimize the physiology of our body, learning to work on our psycho-emotional nature, so mental and, that sounds funny, psycho-emotional. How many of you are psycho-emotional people? Uh, Mental-emotional nature, and then there's the spiritual aim of meditation as well. You can target all three or any one of the three. So thinking about meditation in terms of calming the mind, which is really what it is, so that f- foc- focusing the mind, bringing the mental activity narrowed into a place of focus. Okay, we call that in Sanskrit ekagrata, one-pointedness. Now, the mind won't go blank. Some people think that the goal of meditation is to make the mind go blank. Now, only at the highest, highest levels of practice are we able to think of nothing and subsequently transcend all thought. For the vast majority of all human beings, that's not possible. The mind is designed to have neurons that fire and thoughts are occurring. What our goal and our practice actually is, is to narrow and focus and concentrate the mental energy into a small point. So instead of thinking about all kinds of disparate, disconnected, random thoughts, that's a dispersion of our energy, of our mental energy, the idea is to narrow the focus. So for example, if you think about, if, if you use a seed, a seed thought or an anchor point of say a candle flame, okay? Now the flame would be a seed for meditation. It's one thing to think about. However, the flame has aspects. There are things that you can think about regarding the flame, the size of it, the shape of it, the color of it. How does fire make you feel? What kind of candle is it? Where'd you get it from? <laughs> How long is it gonna burn before it's out? Is the wax gonna drip on my new rug that I got? So that's okay though. Your mind is focused on the candle. Now, if the mind is thinking about the candle flame for about two or three seconds, looking at the color and the shape, and then you're thinking about food later, which is what I do a lot of the time, you hear a sound outside and your mind gets dragged outward, that's not dharana, that's not focusing the mind, and that's not meditation. We wanna train the mind to stay on one point. It's a training. Think of a pack of wild horses. They're strong, they're powerful, and they're very, their energy can be dispersed when they run. Now, can they be tamed? Of course. You can work to train wild horses like you can work to train the mind. So the practical technique is keep bringing the mind back. Keep bringing the mind back. Sometimes, many times, before you know it, you're thinking about something else and you don't even know how you got on that other thought. That happens to all of us. So again, using our candle flame example, you're focusing on the flame. You're just keeping your mind on the flame. Then all of a sudden you're thinking about your car, you gotta get gas later, your errand list. How'd you get there? How that just, it doesn't matter. Bring the mind back, bring the mind back. And it happens over and over again. That's why this is called a sadhana, a practice. Day after day, week after week, month after month, lifetime after lifetime. Now, those of us who have a gift and who can stay focused relatively easily, this ain't your first go around. You've been practicing for a long time, probably many lives. Those of us who just have natural abilities to do things, and for those of us that things come easier to us, we've been doing those, we've been doing them, we've had lots of practice. Same thing with meditation and focusing the mind. So dharana, D-H-A-R-A-N-A, dharana. That's focus. Concentrating our mental efforts on one point. And the seed or the anchor thought can be virtually anything. Preferably it's something sattvic, something peaceful, something relatively spiritual and positive in nature. Today's meditation is going to focus around our consciousness at the level of our second chakra. Second chakra. So the mental, the mental activity that goes on at the second chakra has to do with, well, there are positives and negatives for all the different chakras, and we're gonna focus on the positive. 
And one of the main functionalities of that plexus of energy in our body is the idea of cell creation, creation of cells, procreation, reproductive, re reproductivity. And this has to do with healing the body physically, not mental, emotional stuff. We're not talking about trauma or suffering. We're talking about physical things. So one of the, one of the cool aspects of, of yoga practice is that you can heal your physical body. It does take the power of the mind. It does take the power of energy, but it also takes prana, prana shakti that exists in all the different chakras and specifically the second chakra. So we're gonna use the second chakra as our seed thought, as our anchor point for our mind today. When your mind wanders to your to-do list, bring it back. When you start thinking about something else, bring it back. That's the goal, the technique. Narrow that focus. Instead of a wide angle lens of mental energy, get it into a narrow microscopic one-pointed ekagrata. So you know ekam inhale, that's ekam means number one, Grata is point, eka grata, one pointed focus. Good talk? All right, let's do it. Sit tall, please. Get comfy. Grow your spine. Allow the eyes to close. Adjust shoulders. Place the crown of the head over the base of the spine. Start to deepen the breath. Focus on the inhales and exhales. And whenever you focus your mind on the breath, prana shakti is activated. Prana shakti coupled with mental intention and the natural energies at the second chakra all coupled together foster the healing of the physical body healing regeneration of cells regrowth rejuvenation reorientation restructuring of tissues and that's what we'll do okay let's please build some prana through a process called surya bedna now this is a process of breathing in the right nostril, out the left nostril, in the right nostril, out the left nostril. So we're not doing alternate nostril breathing. We're doing in the right, out the left. So there's a chance you'll feel imbalanced afterwards, but that's not what has to happen if you stay stable and just sense a cycle, a cyclical nature of energy entering in the right, exiting the left. So please bend your right elbow, close the left nostril with your pinky and ring finger of your right hand, and slowly breathe in through the right nostril, all the way in. Close the right nostril, exhale through the left nostril. Breathe in through the right nostril. Out through the left. And now continue this cycle on your own. Slow the breathing down. So we're inhaling through the right, that's our Surya Nadi. Okay, that's the, the Nadi, the energetic channel associated to heat, to light, to sun. It's our masculine force. We're charging up our body and our spine with additional prana so we can use it for self-healing. Bedna means piercing, so we're piercing our sun, piercing the sun. To add an additional layer of visualization, I want you to see the sun under the right nostril. And as you inhale, you're literally breathing in sunlight. You're breathing in the fire of solar energy. Inhaling deeply through the right, exhaling through the left. Now this, this nadi, this energetic channel at the right nostril moves in through the brain and down the spine, the left side of the spine. So we're charging the left brain, the left side of the spine. 
by breathing through the right nostril. Please continue. Finish the cycle that you're on, then release the hands to the knees. And since we were breathing in through the nose, there's a natural collection of prana in the third eye. And so first build that additionally with your mind. Solar prana in the head, middle of the brain. Focusing, gathering, and collecting energy there. Now we all have our conceptions of what chakras might look like or might do for us in terms of functionality or where they might be in the body. Let's drop all that and release all that. And let's not worry about where the second chakra is located. Rather, I want you to sense and to know the place, the consciousness in the body that manages our physical healing, the health of our flesh. Doesn't matter where it is physically. And allow the prana in the brain, the energy we've built, to go there. It's not up or down or in or out. It's the prana goes to the place where we manage our healing. If you choose, you can feel it at the top of the sacrum, you can feel it in the abdomen, wherever feels powerful to you for healing. Focus the mind there. And we're no longer shaping the breath. But as you notice the body naturally breathe in, that focal point of energy grows and it brightens and it lightens. And we're supercharging that energetic plexus, that vortex of energy. Keep the mind focused on building energy. Svadhisthana chakra. Sva means self. We're healing the self. And now please identify an area of the body that might need a healing right now. It could be a joint, a muscle, something physical an organ, maybe there's an illness or a disease inside the body, currently, temporarily. And we'll use a, a two-part process to send this healing prana shakti to that location. When you notice the body inhale, more prana gathers at second chakra. You can even magnetize prana from outside of the body, pulling it in. And as you notice the body exhale, send that prana like a wave or a stream to the location in the physical body that needs healing. The 
The inhale magnetizes prana inside. The exhale sends the prana to the location in the body that needs additional creation of new cells, fresh tissues, additional blood flow, healing. And if there's not a particular location, just soak and satiate the entire physical body with prana. mind wanders, bring it back. Train the mind to focus. Just another 30 seconds to a minute. Please release the technique and just be still. Inhale deeply. Please join me in chanting one ohm. Bring the palms to the chest. Exhale completely. Inhale to prepare. Namaste. Have an amazing day. See everyone tomorrow. Thank you so, so much for joining us.